Okay, welcome to the CISO Talks podcast hosted by Lapide. I'm here with Jeff Williams, who is the co-founder and CTO over at Contrast Security. Nice to meet you, Jeff. Thanks so much for joining the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jason. No problem at all. Would you mind, Jeff, um, just by starting, perhaps give me a little bit of a synopsis around yourself and what you're all about and really what Contrast is all about too. I'm really interested to find out a bit more, a bit more about that. Oh, absolutely. Yes. So uh, I got into, I was a developer for a number of years and kind of accidentally got into security. And then uh, hmm. in the late 90s, uh, the field of application security kind of started happening and I was a perfect fit for it because of my background. So uh, I started focusing on that. Um, got involved in OWASP really early. So uh, you know, I, I love the Open Web Application Security Project and uh, made some contributions early and then became the global chair for the first sort of 10 years of, of OWASP and uh, led a bunch of projects there. I also um, started a consulting company and I ran uh, a, a pretty large practice there of uh, folks working for large enterprises, doing building AppSec programs, doing code review and pen testing, uh, threat modeling, security architecture review, training, a lot of training. Uh, so I've really, mm. I've done a lot of different things in application security. And then uh, seven years ago, I founded a company called Contrast Security to try to bring a new product to market to do a better job at uh, automating application security. Interesting. And when you say automating um, application security, how, how, how does it do a better job? Tell me a bit more about that. Well, sort of the traditional approach to automating AppSec, most of the tools mm. were invented, you know, 15 years ago or more. So tools like static analysis, dynamic analysis, and uh, mm. web application firewalls have all been around for a really long time. They've got a lot of really known problems, mostly having to do with kind of accuracy and speed. And, and they're not really very automated because they're not very accurate. And if, mm. if your AppSec tool isn't accurate, then you have to have experts involved in the process. And that, that just doesn't work anymore. So we had Got this it. idea, if we could move the analysis kind of inside the running application, kind of like the way a, uh, an APM tool like New Relic or AppDynamics does performance analysis uh, mm. by instrumenting an application and watching it as it runs, we could get much more accurate results. And so that's, we built a company around that concept. And so we instrument your application we do uh, application security testing. So we find vulnerabilities We in a, in a bunch of different kinds of apps. We do software composition analysis. So we help you understand your open source and figure out where you're vulnerable and which, which libraries are actually used uh, that you need to fix. And then we also work in production to, you know, to identify attacks and then prevent attacks from exploiting your applications. But because it's inside, it's more accurate. So you don't need as much human expertise and you can really automate it at kind of the speed of DevOps. I see, that's, that's interesting. So, okay, so what kind of conversations are you having with your customers on a day-to-day -day basis? What kind of business problems are they having that you, know, you feel like you can help solve with, you know, with your, with your, your te 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 technology? Yeah, well, so I'd, I'd say the big problem is that frankly, we're not very good at writing secure code. Uh, mm. You know, if you look at the last 20 years, okay. the situation hasn't changed that much. OWASP is what now, 19 years old or something like that, 20 years old. Um, right. And we've been fighting the same problems and the same level of problems. So if you look at an application today, uh, you yeah. know, random applications probably got uh, 30 vulnerabilities in it. And they're roughly the same vulnerabilities that they had almost 20 years ago. And that's crazy. Got it. We haven't made a sure. lot of progress. And so it's really like, if you think about a one app at a time, application security is not that hard. It's doable. You need some experts, you need some tools and you can do it. But when you start looking at organizations that have hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of applications, the problem is massively uh, unscalable. It's just, it, it's way too much for any one organization to deal with. So we've got to get better. We've got to be able to scale AppSec and do it uh, really cost-effectively, mm. really build it into the dev process. With you, with you. And do you feel like, um, Jeff, you're having to sort of take your, your clients and, you know, on, a, on a journey of education, or do you feel like they get it? Do you feel like they actually understand the problems that you're trying to fix? Well, uh, it depends on the organization, actually. Like some industries, like the financial industry and insurance mm. industries, uh, they're pretty good. Healthcare is coming along. Government's a little behind them. And then there's, you know, retail and uh, other sectors that are, you know, not as advanced. But generally, 
I think the awareness of application security is growing uh, quite a bit. And you know, some of it's for bad reasons, right? Some of it's because of major flaws and breaches like the, the log for shell disaster that just happened over the Christmas break or solar winds or right. Messiah, some of these other breaches, uh, you know, they're really raising awareness. And I'm, I'm in the U S the, mm -hmm. the cybersecurity order, the, uh, the executive order that came out recently, uh, executive order. I think mm -hmm. has been doing a lot. I think it was actually pretty forward thinking and they, they really challenged NIST and other agencies to do something really innovative to try to change the game because we're not mm. we're not in a good position right now